And that is the idea of MLP Mixel. We started the course with MLPs and we are sort of closing this chapter with MLPs again. And you know, they don't have uh, much inductive bias in them. And it means that you need to scale up your data the same way that you are doing it with transformers. The idea is actually very similar to what attention does. You have your image, you break it into a sequence of patches, maybe 16 by 16. Then you push it through a linear operation to give you lower dimension for these vectors. So these vectors now have lower dimensions. Now, rather than pushing it through n layers of transformers, you're gonna push it through an n layers of MLP mixers. And then you're gonna put a global average pooling. So you're gonna pool all of the vectors that are kind of that are gonna come out of your uh, model. You put a fully connected layer on top of it, and then you do your classification. So one thing that I need I owe you is what is the mixing, what is MLP mixer. This is actually a very simple architecture, and you guys should be able to even code it in pure NumPy. You don't even need to uh, use TensorFlow or Keras or JAX or PyTorch. But uh, if you use automatic differentiation, then that's going to be also even easier to implement this because what we need to know about our MLPs. Previously for attention, we needed the element of our sequence to talk to each other and pay attention to each other. And at the same time, you were pushing it through MLPs. So this last layer is exactly what you had for the transformer. These are the MLPs for transformer. This part here is where you are actually in for your uh, elements to talk to each other. And how are you gonna do it? Let's concatenate this sequence. That's gonna give you an N by C matrix. You transpose it. Now your patches are gonna be uh, your other dimension. Your channels are gonna be the vertical dimension. We know that MLP is gonna mix the information. You're gonna multiply this vector by a matrix, push it through a nonlinearity, multiply it by another matrix, push it through another nonlinearity. So it's gonna operate across this dimension. It means that you are mixing your information across the elements, across the N dimension, across the sequence length. That's gonna give you another uh, matrix, you transpose it. Now the information is mixed across elements. You push it through a multi-layer perceptron. The second one is gonna mix the information across channels. And this exactly you had it for a transformer as well. And then the escape connections are also gonna be there. So you make sure the dimensions match so that you can add a residual connection. What is your MLP? This is the only thing that you need to implement. It's a linear layer, uh, an aggregation, and another linear layer, and you're gonna output your results. So one of them is mixing your tokens. The first one is token mixing. The other one is mixing the channels. Let's go through the math and then it's gonna become even more clear. You have your X, which is a concatenation of your elements in the sequence. That's gonna give you a matrix. It's gonna have a length of S. So you have S elements in your sequence and each one is a vector that is C dimensional and you're putting everything in a matrix. S is actually the number of non-overlapping image patches. In this case, it's gonna be nine. Then the same way that you were turning an image into a sequence of patches, you're gonna do the same thing here as well. We were doing it with the vision transformer. We are gonna do the same thing here. And basically your S is the height of your, your image, width of your image divided by the size of the patches, which could be 16 by 16 or P by P. That's the resolution of your image. P by P is the resolution of each patch. And then you're gonna use the same embedding matrix to embed from dimension uh, C to dimension smaller, to a smaller dimension. And actually C is gonna give you the hidden dimension. So whatever that I explained is actually what you have here. It is after the projection and it is after uh, turning your image into a sequence of patches. So X are these uh, colorful vectors, which is exactly what you have here. Then what are you gonna do? You're gonna do a token mixing. You're gonna do a channel mixing. One of them is doing token mixing. It means that you're gonna do the same operation for every single channel. So you're gonna fix a channel and they do the same operations on the rows 
actually on this column. You're going to choose another channel. You're going to do the same operations on column, etc. It is equivalent to transposing. So one is operating on columns. The other one is operating on rows. The one that is operating on columns is doing the token for us. There is one layer normalization, one matrix vector multiplication and nonlinearity, another vector matrix multiplication, and then adding the residual connection. So the entire figure here is just this line of math. You take the outcome, layer norm it, multiply it by a matrix, by another matrix, nonlinearity, add the residual connection. Now you are mixing the channels. And precise, these are the dimensions of your matrices. Let's make sure this is correct. If you pick one of the columns in your X, that's going to be S-dimensional. So this vector here is S-dimensional. You multiply it by a matrix that is going to take you from dimension S to dimension DS. And then W2 is going to take you from dimension DS to S. Now you're going to be able to add that residual connection. And this is just Gaussian error linear unit. It's a smooth approximation of ReLU. One cool thing here compared to transformers is that the architecture that you get is going to have linear complexity in terms of your sequence length. And as a consequence, it's going to be linear in terms of the number of pixels in your image. This is unlike what you had with transformers. They had quadratic cost because every single vector had to pay attention to every other. Every single vector had to pay attention to every other vector in your sequence. That has a quadratic cost. This one is linear. It only depends on the size of your S. And then you're going to get similar figures to what you had before and similar messages. What is that? Yes, with the mixer architecture, you're going to be able to push the state of the art in terms of image and accuracy. They are not that expensive to train or actually pre trained. And at the same time, if you keep increasing the size of your data set, uh, this is the big. Uh, these are region transformers, the dashed lines. You are going to be able to match the performance of region transformers. So they are as good as the region transformers. And then at some point, you're going to beat a, re a residual model. And BIT stands for big transfer. This was the previous architecture with residual connections. And then it is competitive to region transformers. It is a slightly better than ResNet, both in terms of uh, the accuracy and in terms of throughput, how many images per second are you processing? Which core of your computer, CPU or GPU? And so the message is that they are as good as transformers. We can actually scale them to big data. And as you scale them to big data, they are going to beat uh, residual connections and ResNets and conventional neural networks. And it's very easy to implement them. And actually, after this paper, people are starting to use MLP architectures for text as well. So it's going to be similar architecture. And if you're interested, the paper name is Pay Attention to MLPs. We are going to cover that, uh, I think, next, next semester. But it's good to know about it. Any questions? So this is actually a good exercise to implement this. I'm not sure if this is going to do a good job on smaller data sets like MNIST, because this is a big data tool. But it's, it's actually not that hard to implement this. All you need to know are MLPs. That's it.